Now, don't panic. I know it looks like a car, but this is still two wheels better. And this week, we thought we'd have a look at trikes. Now, trikes and bikes have been together and around for a long time. Most of the trikes that we see at bike shows and bike events are the same sort of configuration. Motorcycle front end and a back axle off a car. And the engine is sometimes at the front, sometimes at the back. And there's an assortment of bodywork and bits and pieces in between, however you want to make it look. But the connection between trikes and bikes is a very, very old one. Speaking of very, very old things, here's my mate, Jeff Stone. Well, I think I shall ignore that remark, like I do most things that Paul says anyway. But talking of old things, this Morgan, 1932 Morgan, uses a bike engine though, V-twin matchless engine, chain drive at the back. This was the business in the 1930s, the sporting bike for the young blade, not fire blade. But look at this one here, beautiful little Morgan here. Again, under here is a V-twin matchless engine, side valve this time. But there it is, nestling neatly there, radiated behind it. Beautiful little thing, and it's only done 40,000 miles since 1934. Amazing. But anyway, if you were to look at a modern V-twin engine, what would you think of? Perhaps you'd think of Ducatis, but what about Motor Guzzi's? Now here's a lump that uh, I recognise, a V-twin Motor Guzzi engine. T Tony Diver, this is a Triking. Now you, you are Mr. Triking, aren't you? You make oh, these yeah, things. I suppose so, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mr. So, Triking. What, what on earth possessed you? Where did, where, how did you get into this? Well, I've always been a Morgan enthusiast, or a three-wheeler enthusiast. I'd had eight Morgans, and uh, I couldn't see me commuting to between Norwich and Munich in a Morgan, so I decided to make myself a triking. And, uh. or, well, it wasn't called a triking, eh? but I made it, and then other people wanted them, and it sort of carried on from there. Right, and how long have you been doing this now? Uh, well, I've been starting the Lens End trial at Easter for the 20th time, still with the same one, and it's done about 600,000 miles. Flipping yeah. it. Yeah. Brilliant. So, but, I mean, it, I mean, going back to the engine, because that, that, so that's the bit I recognise. I would, you would see that in what, a Motor Guzzi Le Mans, is that right? Yeah, that, that's, uh, p apart from the fact this has got twin plugs, which is a bit of tuning, and it's mm -hmm. got some uh, triking heads and mm -hmm. the, and an alternator so you can go out in the dark right yeah there wasn't enough power f for the bike alternator right and what, what about you i noticed i've seen you whizzing around you've got reverse on these as well uh s not necessarily but th this one has yeah. um so is that is that a different gearbox as well then it's a car gearbox yeah, yeah typical car gearbox five forward and one reverse Lovely. we have to do a few different things we make most of the bits for that right so you say, I know you, you make these, I mean, an awful lot of work in it. How many do you turn out in a year, say? Well, I've made about 130 in 20 years, so I suppose about six or seven a year. Blimey I mean, that, eh? Well, I'm a much sought after machine, I'm, I don't doubt. What's it going to cost, Tom? It's beautiful. Are they expensive? Uh, well, this one's second hand. It's probably going to Japan for 15 grand. Wow, right. Well, uh, if I said to you now, I like this, it's great fun, um, make me one. What's it going to cost me? Well, uh, if it was the same as this, we'd Connolly leather and a few bits and bobs. Yeah. Probably the best part of 20 grand. But well. we're doing one for nearly 30 grand for Japan at the yeah. moment. So I could have one of these for a mm, bit under 20 grand? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And well, it's a lot more... you in kit form, find yourself a bike and yeah. um, seven grand upwards for the uh, components we make. Brilliant. And a lot more fun than a Ford Escort, eh? Well, not necessarily. Depends. Oh, I think so, don't you? <laughs> Driving, yes. Yeah. Well, here I am in a very cosy cockpit in this little Morgan with the proud owner, Harry Cartwright. Harry, uh, how long have you had this uh, beautiful little example? Uh, I bought this from Romsey from Albert and the Motorsport magazine in 1982. And did you have to do a lot of work on it, or was it like this? I mean, it's immaculate. Well, it, it's been totally restored. It, it was very complete <laughs> when it came, although it had been standing for all, all those years and rushed in places. But we gave it a, a total overhaul, from uh, completely dismantled, and, and from the chassis upwards has been restored. Well, I must say, I mean, it's really quaint being in this. I think that's the, the word. Can you tell us, what are all these controls you've got like, here on the... Oh, I know you said the handlebars on the, the steering uh, wheel. Controls are uh, at hand uh, with the steering wheel. Well, they move with the steering wheel. The big one here is the, the throttle, or the accelerator, you call this, in the car. 
The next one is the extra air, as in motorcycle controls, uh, or choke in the way of uh, cars. Way of the car, yeah. And this one is the advanced and retard for the ignition spark. And so there's no foot throttle or, or whatever then down there? No, the two pedals, left is for the clutch and the right for the, for the rear brake. So this must take some getting used to then, is it? To sort of well, which hand to use next and... Yes, one has to remember, uh, uh, especially as we were driving one car one day and this car the other day. Um, so it's a matter of getting used to it and realising where you are. <laughs> In the old days, you used to have matchless bikes. So, so what was the sort of link to the Morgan? Was it because you sort of wanted to keep that affinity or was it just that you wanted a, a, an old car? No, I, I like V-twin engines and especially V-twin side valve engines. And, and these use those. And, uh, well, I've, I've just always had the uh, desire to own a Morgan three-wheeler. So, so it was the, um, the engine first and then the car yes. followed? Yes, that's true, yes. Okay, well, thanks very much, Harry. Well, now for something completely different and bringing us right up to the 21st century is the Grinnell Scorpion, BMW powered, and this is the creator, Mark Grinnell. Mark. How did all this start? I'd owned a couple of BMW K-Series motorcycles and I thought the uh, BMW powertrain was a very good ideal powertrain for a three-wheeler setup. So we decided to build something completely different really, exploit a market which, which wasn't really tapped. And, and you certainly did this, didn't you? I mean, it's got the two front wheels, like the Morgans that we've seen, single back one, but bang up to date. I mean, you've got very sort of racy looking front suspension. Is that your own design? Yes, the, uh, the whole idea was originally taken from the Morgan theme, if you like, two wheels at the front. The old Morgans, of course, we raced at Brooklyn and other, tra or other race tracks like that. And sure, we've borrowed ideas from race cars and race technology to try and bring the car up to date to make it handle right. It's a, a mid-engine vehicle with a very nice balance. Yeah, and so what's he got underneath this? Has he got a tubular sh chassis or just <coughs> space frame chassis? Is it? Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a, a, there are, it is a tubular space frame, yeah. as you say. There are various different gauges. It's TUV approved and tested. It's approved for um, just about all European countries. Um, and of course it's a mid-engine vehicle so the engine and drivetrain is behind me as opposed to the Morgans that you've just seen with the engine on the front. Yeah and, and right behind you at that. Now how do you get on with BMW? BMW don't give away engine, or oh, I don't suppose they do give it away do they? But I mean they don't let you have engines lightly do they? So they've approved you have they? Well the, from the outset, I was I designed or we designed the car with the intention of trying to obtain BMW approval where we could possibly get an OE agreement. We were successful in doing that. We went to BMW with the first prototype and showed it to the to the uh, powers of B Dan and Bracknell, and it was received very favourably. And after a couple of attempts, we were successful in getting a, an OE supply from the factory in Germany. So we were able to buy new engine and drivetrains from BMW. Thank you very much, BMW. <laughs> and of course, we buy uh, used engine and drivetrains from Crash Bikes and older, longer in the tooth bikes. Yeah. Now when it comes down to the nitty gritty, the, the guy who's perhaps got a BMW and says, oh, I fancy one of those, I mean, can he buy this as a kit? We sell them semi-knockdown and fully built, although most of the vehicles we sell are fully built. Uh, semi-knockdown price, let me tell you prices? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> semi-knockdown <laughs> semi prices start at just under 8,000. That's everything excluding the engine and drivetrain. Wheels, tyres, paintwork, the whole lot. Requires about 120 hours assembly, mm -hmm. right up to uh, a fully built brand new vehicle, which costs roughly 15,000 plus VAT. Now, what were you saying about old things before, Paul? This, uh, <laughs> this is the business, is it not? Yeah, I didn't mean you really, Jeff. No, this is very futuristic, This isn't more it? suits my image. It's racy and you fast so? and lightweight. All right. yeah. It's very stiff and silver. <laughs> You're like, oh, yeah, that's a, that's good. You're supposed to put it on your hair, not sup it, that stuff, you know. Very Star wars this, isn't it? It is. Well, mm. well that's one way of looking at it. But I think it's really neat. and it's, uh, It brings three wheelers bang up to date, doesn't it? Well, they're good for what do you think? Have you enjoyed driving these today? Oh, yeah. Terrific amount of fun. Oh, I, th yeah. I think you can, you can see the affinity. It's, they're not motorbikes, obviously, but you can see the affinity aren't they? Well, Roaring engines. And yeah, I know it's a cliche to say, and you hear it so many times, that it's a driver's car or bike or what are they called, well, these things? <laughs> well, Track three wheelers, isn't uh, it? Yeah, yeah, whatever. Well, but you really do need to get in them and uh, drive them to appreciate them, don't yeah. you? Oh, they are a fun thing. I mean, and you don't need a full licence, you know that as well, don't you? 
That's right. A bike license. A bike yeah. license. You don't need a full car license, should I say? But no. you can ride his on a bike license. That's right. And I think that's the attraction, as Mark was saying. You know, that's where like, the market's coming. Good fun, and they go like the clappers, don't they? Anyway. Yeah, they do. And I'm dying to go. So do, you, you're staying in there. You're I'll come, stay here. I'll I might trust feel you. your knee now. No, you're you right? keep your hands off, man. Go on, I'll trust <laughs> you. Let's uh, take, right. a, take me for a spin. Let's go.